Hello, everyone, and welcome to Attack of Opportunity. Today, a special treat. We are talking with Elton. Did I get it right? Yeah, oh, the first, uh, there, there, Elton. Okay, great. Elton Wilhouse, who is a Kickstarter. Now, I know that you guys are familiar. The wonderful world of Kickstarter, where everyone spams YouTube and Twitter and such and says, hey, help, help a brother out. I'm making a board game. I'm making this and that. I'm interested in what it takes to be one. I'm interested in this gentleman here who is a content creator in his own right because he's put his money and his time on the line. But before we get into all of that, got to ask you the first question. The first question that we ask every victim that comes on our show. When did you know, first, going back in your own personal history background, that you were a geek, a nerd, one of us, one of us? Yeah, absolutely. It's actually something that has been very near and dear to me my whole life. Uh, some of my earliest memories are sitting around the basement in the garage with my father and his friends as they played tactical wargaming and you know local area network games, Warcraft, Starcraft, the whole thing. Uh, and then as I grew up, it was just something that stuck with me going into trading card games and D&D &D and things like that. And so it's always been a key part of my life. So the old man mm -hmm. uh, exposed you to this as a child. It's terrible. No, I, I understand completely. Um, my father being a big sci-fi buff, Doctor Who, Science International was on the television and then, you know, as well as Hockey Night in Canada. Um, mm -hmm. Whereabouts are you right now? I believe you're in the States. Yes, yes. I'm down in the States. I'm out of Utah, uh, about 30 minutes south of Salt Lake City. Uh, just living in a house, uh, having a good time with my wife and my dog and uh, jumping through all kinds of different hoops to get projects off the ground. So, Well, we usually, because we're a podcast and we or podcasting network, sorry, we're a network now, and we are trying to get into breaking into the actual play podcast, lots of Pathfinder and some Star Wars games. You're sort of within that community, but out on a ledge. Beyond the Kickstarter, you've decided to create not just content, but an actual physical buy it in a store. Get it? Can we can we start at the beginning? What inspired you to like do that instead of just having the guys over for the nerd poker night or you know haunting gaming shops with the trading cards and becoming the big collector or you know maybe these things are part of your your personal life? What what really what was that spark that got you going? I'm going to do this time, money gone. Let's go. Yeah. Lots of time and lots of money gone so far anyway. But, uh, so I've been playing D and D and Pathfinder for a little bit over a decade and three games in they, the DM dropped out and everybody just asked me to DM and, uh, not knowing any of the rules, you know, that was the start of the journey for me. Uh, so I ground through a whole bunch of different systems, uh, for the last five years, I've been professionally GMing. I go to parties and businesses and teach them how to play D and D. And then, uh, three years ago, I actually started. Oh, I, sorry. Hang, hang on a sec. A business. You mean like there's a board meeting and someone's like, you know, Rogers for this report. I mentioned to roll D 20. Let's, let's call it that, that uh, Elton guy, get him in here. And you come in your like your suit and the board shorts from the waist down. And you're like, guys, we're going to play Dungeons and Dragons. Like, seriously, this is how this goes yeah. down for you. Yeah, um, so I had a close friend who invited me. They wanted to have a company party, and uh, uh, some of the guys were interested in learning how to play a role-playing game, and he knew that I was very into it, and so he asked me to come out and run some games for him. I uh, walked him through the whole process. Uh, the first time that I ran a professional game, it was 12 players, and I spent uh, six and a half hours with them playing the game, grinding through, and all of it improv by the end. It was just miserable. But, uh, <laughs> it sounds like it's been six and a half hours. Up. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad if you can make something profitable. I mean, and most of us, um, most people think we're delusion and like, oh, we're going to be the next big thing on the internet. And a lot of guys that I believe, like yourself or myself, would really just like to make just enough to kind of cover expenses or yeah. maybe, you know, dial back the full time life to a part time life and do this full time for a living. Not necessarily rich, not necessarily famous, just, you know, just enough to get by and just do what you love and have it self-sustaining. Yeah. Now, so there you are, you're, you're running around in the private and the business sector DMing. How does that branch out? Or, you know, instead of you going, I'm going to do this for a living, how did you branch out into taking the big Kickstarter risk? Yeah. So uh, three years ago, I started a game store. Um, and, uh, as part of that process, I was teaching people how to play all the time. And the same problems kept coming up over and over and over again, went out into a cabin in the woods with some friends, non gamers. And one of them brought me a popular cup and dice game that everybody knows, a Yahtzee and asked if I could teach him how to play D and D. 
And uh, I said no, because I knew that they had never played anything more complex than Monopoly and that there was no hope for me with no preparation, no books, anything to be able to teach them how to play. And so uh, I developed this system uh, originally just intending to keep it among my friends. Uh, but then every time that I tested it, people kept asking me for copies. And so as I looked at it, I decided it was something that I wanted to share. And the best platform for me anyway, uh, looked like it was going to be Kickstarter. Um, you have some distinct advantages with using Kickstarter as a system to boot, especially your first couple of products, right? It acts both as a distribution method and as a marketing tool, uh, which is an interesting system to come from. You know, obviously I could have sold copies in my store and, you know, hit a community of 30 to 50 people and watch it grow organically. But uh, if you invest a little bit of your money and a little bit of your time into growing digitally first, you know, you reach a much wider audience right off the bat. So let's talk about what you actually invented. So there you are, Cabin in the Woods, with nothing but D6s, and these guys are begging for a game that needs a D20. Um, do you have any experience with the old WEG, I think it's called the WEG system, the old Star Wars D6 system? It actually had DCs, if the Roll20 yeah. community understands what I'm talking about, and you'd roll what was called a pool of dice, and as your character advanced or he had more skills, instead of adding ranks or something like pluses or, or slots or whatever into that skill, you would get an extra dice to roll. Hence, pool, one dice, two dice. I'm really good at something, I get to roll three dice. And there'd be a set number of difficulty. Five is easy, 10 is normal, 15 is hard, 20, forget about it. 25, you gotta be Superman, uh, that kind of thing. Is this how Dimensions D6 RPG, I believe is the name? That mm -hmm. we're gonna try and start, high, right? Dimensions are there. Um, is, are you taking from that? Or did you just start from scratch and going, damn, all I have is six lovely ignorant lambs and a bunch of D6 from Yahtzee Yep. That was the big thing is, uh, especially with this particular group, none of them had a background in gaming. And so I knew that I couldn't start with any of the fundamental terms that people already know, uh, gamers anyway, already know. Uh, and so as I looked at first, I looked at a whole bunch of different systems, you know, knowing that the situation was going to come up that we were only going to have basic dice, pen and paper. Um, and I couldn't find anything that I felt was easy enough, simple enough that still encapsulated the heart of role-playing games. And so, uh, I just, I started from scratch and I had a couple of objectives. Uh, the first was obviously it needed to only use D6. Uh, everything needed to be, uh, easy to access for somebody who had never played the game before. So we can't use complex algebra and the rule book can't be longer than five or 10 minutes. Right. Uh, and then the third constraint that I gave myself is that I wanted it to fit in your pocket. So you could literally take it anywhere and just pull it out and play. Ooh, that's good. I like that one. I like the, la <laughs> I like the last one. Portable yeah. size. Oh, yeah, no, exactly. that's good. Um, and so that was the thing was I just I started from scratch. And it was a process. Uh, I've been working on this game for about two and a half years. Um, and the first year to year and a half was honestly just sitting, mulling in my head over and over and over again, trying different mechanics, trying to mix different things up uh, and find something that's interesting. Um, especially when you're dealing with only D6, the mathematical properties of rolling dice are clunky. Um, and it, so because of that, it necessitates that you start with either a huge amount of D6 or a very, very small amount. And I wanted to make sure that, again, if they only had a Yahtzee set, they could play. Uh, and so because of that, uh, there was a breakthrough mechanic that I figured out uh, about a year ago, uh, which is a luck mechanic that allows me to manipulate the dice on the table uh, to make sure that I can have stats with no dice in them uh, or a low amount of dice so that at early levels, players are learning how to play the game, manipulating their roles, and uh, able to function with just a straight my role versus your role game without a lot of additional math. Oh, this sounds good. This sounds very good. Very, very, very intriguing. We have uh, a, a guy, a fan that reached out to us. His name is Jared Mercer. No relation to Matt Mercer, though we like to tease him about him. We call him Jared the Intern. And like yourself, he's trying to get a gaming shop off the ground. Uh, he's breaking into second edition Pathfinder. And he wants to do for 3.5 and Forgotten Realms that switched over going, here's a completely different world in, mm -hmm. for, in the 3.5 system. And they go, boom, here's... Eberron, this guy won the contest. This guy is looking to create an actual world drawing from a new dice set. It sounds like you're doing the exact 
opposite where you're taking a dice set and saying you can use this core system in anything? Or are we lucky enough to say that there is an actual fantasy world that comes along with this little handbook rulebook? I have good news for you. Both of those statements are true. So I've specifically designed it to be system agnostic, uh, or, or I should say fandom agnostic, right? If you want to run, uh, I don't know, a My Little Pony campaign, a Doctor Who campaign, a Star Wars campaign, you take it, you roll with it. There are instructions in the basic rules that teach you as a storyteller how to make your own decisions and how to make your own stories. Um, but uh, one of the other things that we saw as a hurdle, especially to new players, is that they're very afraid of the content creation. Uh, and especially if you have a group of casual gamers or Euro gamers who have never played a role-playing game before, how do you determine who's going to be the GM, right? And so as part of this system, we're launching a digital component that is just attached to the game uh, where we've created a number of different worlds uh, as well as a whole bunch of additional content that people can just plug and play. Um, so the, uh, the first three realms that we're visiting in season one are high fantasy, Victorian steampunk, and dystopian sci-fi. Uh, we have three additional realms that are fully developed that we're planning on launching in season two, assuming that we can actually get to market. Uh, and then we have a number of other worlds uh, and systems in development, as well as we're seeking some IP uh, to be able to launch into a commercial scene. Sorry, you say seasons. You mean as in like a box set is a season or you have something, another platform in which to... Yeah, so uh, we have an adventure portal. One of the things that I decided to uh, sink our funds into uh, is a digital component, a piece of software that uh, just runs through HTML, so you'll be able to access it on any internet-accessible device uh, that helps you run campaigns and build campaigns on your own. Um, so, so, sorry, the, like, is this a guide, a blog, like Roll20 browser that you tap into? This is where you're losing me here. Uh, when you say season, I suddenly think podcasts again going, oh, listen to our show. This is us play testing my system. Mm -hmm. So we have, uh, we have a preset storyline, uh, that runs through a number of different episodes. And if you just want to use the pre-generated content that we have, you'll be able to access those episodes and unlock all oh, of the okay. different possible outcomes. Like a digital um, module. Yes, or like exactly. a digital campaign. Okay, sorry, gotcha. Uh, and uh, we've designed them so that they increase in complexity and difficulty as you move through the season uh, so that you can learn not only how to play the game, but how to run the game. Uh, the, first, uh, the, the first objective with this, right, is that it needs to be as simple as possible. So the very first episode of the first season is designed to be played in under an hour, including learning the basic rule set. And it'll teach you everything that you need to know to be able to play the rest of the game. Um, and so it's a, a really exciting opportunity. And because we're utilizing a digital platform, we can add some cool back-end complexity uh, and some things that, you know, a, a traditional D, a DM or GM would struggle to implement because you'd have to look up so many tables and record so many variables and figure out what's going on. Uh, so we're actually going to be releasing a playable half-hour demo uh, episode here, uh, hopefully this week, um, that uh, has 20,482 possible paths, not including party combinations or death rolls or anything like that. Um, but it's all wow, being that, by this software. Sounds end. like something that takes up just about every weekend you ever had. Yeah, well, uh, we've got some really uh, innovative technology. Uh, there's actually a methodology that I'm trying to get patented as part of this process. I'm hoping to, you know, use some of the funds from uh, the first season to be able to get that through that enables us to rapidly prototype systems. And if we hit some of our stretch goals uh, in the Kickstarter, we're actually going to turn the campaign creator public facing so that people will be able to use it to build their own campaigns, not only in our system, but in any system that's great um okay so what's the easiest way for an outsider to hit a link and find out first about the kickstarter like is it kickstarter dimensions rtp forward slash dot com like give us some idea of where to, to search for first to give you some help to get this off the ground and second some of the content that you already have up as well as looking in you know what i mean like where where does someone need to look what do we need to google to find you yeah. So we have a website uh, fully functioning right now. I'm actually very proud of it. It is dimensions.games. So https colon slash slash D-I-M-E-N-S-I-O-N-S 
www.games.games. Uh, we have a whole bunch of promotional material there, some uh, spoilers that are going to be coming out every week about the system and some of the features that you'll have there. Um, and it has links to both an email list and to our Kickstarter, uh, which the Kickstarter page will also be going live within the next day or two. Uh, and then the Kickstarter itself will launch on April 2nd. Wow. All right. This sounds great. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm, I really want to like, I want to stop the interview for a minute and like go check out all this stuff and then talk to you more about it. This this interview is going to be in two parts, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for listening to part one. Part two with Alton will be will be coming soon uh, to Attack of Opportunity, where we get to grill him even more on everything that we've learned by vetting him and everything. But um, no, I wanted to ask you, um, how long have you been entrenched in this project from the time where you first laid the money down like you know got started and focused going okay once an hour a week this weekend like how long has that journey been for you so far uh so i produced my first prototypes a year ago Mm -hmm. Uh, they were really really fundamental prototypes um but that's when i technically first spent my couple of dollars on paper and printing and lamination uh, and then uh, more seriously, after I thoroughly play tested it into Oblivion about six months ago, I started the process uh, and just dumping my whole self into it. I actually left my game store uh, and have focused on this full time because the more that we've tested it, the more people that we've reached out to, we really feel that this is a product that could change the face of gaming and introduce a whole new generation of gamers to tabletop RPGs. Oh, okay. So how would you, there is a similar system, I believe it's out there. Uh, I don't know it's similar to your game mechanic, but I'm pretty sure it uses D6s. Uh, Mm -hmm. It's called the Apocalypse Game System. We had interviewed uh, Rev from the Crit Show, Mm -hmm. and it's very heavy on the narrative and light on the dice. Would you say that your system runs the 50-50, like classic D&D, where the DM can call upon every skill going, okay, let's hear the role play, but, you know, there's the skill role to make it happen. Would you say that there's a 50-50, a 60-40? Which, um... Does your system lie heavy on one 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 camp or the other? You know what I'm saying? So yeah, absolutely. Um, so we actually have invented three rules of storytelling: the gold and silver and bronze rules of storytelling that are in the basic rules. It revolves entirely around how you, as the storyteller, should run the game. And dimensions is designed to be as crunchy or as light as you need to use for your group. My personal recommendation is that you should probably be looking at about a you know, 65-35, 75-30 split, um, especially with new players, so that they can learn some of the mechanics, some of the terms, and be able to engage in the story. But the number one thing that we communicate uh, to these new players is whatever you want to do, whatever story you want to tell, whatever weapon you want to pull out of your pocket, you figure out a way to do it. And the storyteller's goal is not to hinder you, but to aid you in telling the story that you want to develop. Okay. That sounds awesome. I can't wait to check this out. Not that we're not up to our eyeballs in several shows and and I've stretched my crew very, very thin. But, you know, there's always there's always opportunity here at Rollmongers to, uh, you know, not just to get you on the show of Attack of Opportunity, but possibly, you know, slip you in under the banner with your own. No, no, sorry. I can't (laughs) that publicly. That's all contracts. And we'll have my people call your people. But uh, no, thank you so much, Elton. We've been talking to Elton Wheelhouse. Uh, from the, the Dimensions D6 RPG, you can find him. Well, he's got his own website, so that's easy. Just Google him at dimensions.games. Uh, you can also tweet me at Talon underscore Requo. There you go. Hound, uh, hound him on Twitter. That's how I found him. There's much hound him. And now, now here he is in my clutches. But uh, no, thank you so much for being on the show. Um, I got to say, I've never had an interview go so quickly and smoothly. And, and not that we don't have lots to talk about. It's It really is a point where people are going to put down this interview like myself and go, I want to check out this guy's game. And, you know, it will spark even more conversation amongst players, amongst your clients, your, you know, your customer, as it were. And that today is our goal, not just to meet Elton, the man behind, you know, the dream. Uh, I love the cabin story. That's, that's, that how something that you are completely entrenched in now came out of something that was that random where you're up there and you got all these noobs going, let's play Dungeons and Dragons, man. This is, here's your Yahtzee dice. And <laughs> you've come this far from that. Uh, it's amazing. It's really, really cool. Um, so signing off, 
I am GM Jeff Ball, also on Twitter. You can find the Rollmongers Podcasting Network, why I might say we actually have our own website finally, yes, at rollmongers.com. And of course, the private sector, we have our Patreon put up by Dicewise Entertainment for the Rollmongers Podcasting Network, so you can help support us at our Patreon forward slash rollmongers.com. And if you want to give, well, throw out in the bone, I'm assuming the best way to support you, sir, is to look into his Kickstarter. So yeah. go to kickstarter.com. And what are you labeled there? Uh, so I believe that we should be labeled as the Dimension D6 RPG. Um, I have my partner is handling that side of the business. Uh, so in the meantime, my recommendation is just go straight to the website, dimensions.games. Uh, you can see all the content there and it'll link you directly to all of our resources. Great, great. But hey, web ser- website first. I love the fact that you're not just going, go to Kickstarter, read about it there. You have content up, ready to go right now. Check out his website. Thank you so much for being on the show. And thank, thank you all you. for listening. <laughs>